into nerd. In this video, we're going to be creating a uh, interactive candlestick chart using Python. Now, in order to follow along with this tutorial, you're going to want to have uh, some CSV files, or one CSV file to be precise, um, and you can find that CSV file in the link in the doobly-doo. Uh, it's for United Utilities, a stock that I often use as an example in these tutorials. Uh, you could do that, or perhaps you could go back and watch my stocks to CSV file uh, video, and that will show you how you can make your own if you wanted to use your own stock that you're interested in. Or maybe you have another way and have acquired your own CSV file, in which case make sure you have the columns date, high, low, open and close, because that's what you're going to need to follow along this tutorial. Okay. I'm going to assume you've done one of those many things I just listed. If you have, let's go. Okay. So, in order to do this, what do we need to do? Well, first thing is going to be to pip install a library called Plotly. Yes, Plotly. We're going to install Plotly. I've already done it, so it would be a complete waste of everyone's time to watch it say, you've already installed it. So, bang. Uh, start your little Python program. Let's start by importing the modules. So we're going to be importing plotly uh, dot graph underscore objects as go. That's just typical what you do when you're installing the, uh, when you're using this module. As with pandas, we import it as pd. Um, I'm going to do this by uh, let's first do the thing I always forget to do. Say if name uh, doo -doo 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 is equal to underscore underscore main I explain this in pretty much every video but the reason you do this little if main thing is so that suppose you wrote a function in this file that you wanted to use in another library well if you didn't have this name thing so let's say this file did some stuff like ah oh, it that's the it's calling this function here when you open the file so when you open the file what happens if you say you know python main dot pi it's going to say, ah, oh, right, you're actually running the file. So it checks that the name is main, as in the main process. And then it will start running all this stuff in this if block. And if it's not within this if block, as in if you don't call the function from the if block or you don't execute any code within this if block, then it doesn't get executed. Which means that you could have a, a function up here, uh, you know, um, we'll create the one we're going to create, called create chart, we'll pass in a data frame. And do stuff. Now, at the moment, if we were to run this file running main pi, uh, python main.py or python whatever your script is called.py, doesn't matter because main's still the process, this wouldn't execute, uh, How and which means that you could have another file that would actually import this function and do stuff with it. So I explain that in every video, but you know, here we are. Uh, so, right. What we can do is we need to create a data frame. So we can we can create a data frame, and we can say pd pandas. We want to say read CSV, and then you're going to navigate to your file. I've just got mine in the root of the project, so it's going to be uu.csv. Yours obviously will be different if you've got a different file, or if you've downloaded mine, it should be exactly the same as this. And then what we can do is we can pass that to our create chart function that we have just created up there. Uh, we could even because it's sort of pointless having this, we could just uh, do it here instead, like that. Then we don't have to name any variables that are completely pointless because they're getting named anyway. Okay, so this is going to be really simple and really quick actually. So we need to create a figure, uh, typical in you know creating charts. We we'll call it a figure. Um, pass in the data, the data is going to be an array or a list, whatever you want to call it. So we use this go candlestick function, like this. Mm, yes, it shouldn't have the capital S, I'm a fool. And then if we put um, x is equal to, and then we get our data frame, so we're going to then do this little thing here for every single column we want, and we want five columns, we want date, open, close, high, low. Jiggalo. We don't want Jiggalo. Okay. Uh, date. So these these names you're going to be using are the names of your columns in your CSV file. If you don't have names in your CSV file for all of your columns, go and add them now. You could you could also use indexes, but just 
use names, it's easier, it makes your code clearer, everyone knows what's going on. Although I have done something stupid in that my name for the date column doesn't have a capital D, where all of the others have a capital. So if you're the sort of person who's going to get OCD about this, I do apologise, I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. Okay, so then we call the uh, open, and go to our data frame again, and like I say, capital O there, bit annoying, oh well. We want the high. You could also do this in any order because you know we're actually naming the order of things here. Uh, not, yeah, that didn't make any sense. Uh, I really should work on English, even though it is the first language I speak. Okay, uh, you know, same for the low, and of course we also want the close. Now, normal tutorials, I say, oh, I'll just focus on the adjusted close. But for this particular data set, I don't have the adjusted high, low. And anything else, so it would it would be completely skew with technical term there. If we were to use the adjusted close here, um, see previous videos for the explanation of what the adjusted close is. So we're actually just going to use the normal close here. And then what do we want to do at the end? We just want to say fig dot show, right? My God, wasn't that quick? Now, normally at this point of the video, this is where something goes calamitously wrong and I realize I have completely spelled something wrong or something that just hasn't gone well and then I you know, freak out. Um, so this might be happening right now. Let's run the file, python.main.py. Okay, one, two. Oh, God, I skipped ahead. I told you I'd do something wrong. I always do it every single time. What have I done wrong? Ah. Oh, rookie error. I didn't close the thing, did I? Oh, close the brackets, close the array, close the brackets. Oh, what an absolute clown. Oh, uh, why is it saying that? I definitely have that. Let's have a, let's try this again. We'll come out of Vim and we'll just run it from here, see what happens here. So why is it doing that? I am not 100% sure. I think it's going to work this time. Oh my god, it worked! Did you see how fast that flashed up? Whoa. So I knew it was something to do with Vim being daft, I don't know. But look at this, we have an interactive chart. We can do some dragging. Ooh, look at that. It's being dragged and we can see, we can only highlight the time frame we're interested in. Uh, my data set goes all the way back to 2005. So we can see the Great Recession here. I think it was called the Great Recession, uh, of 2008, and then we can come all the way forward and we can just see the contravirus panic, which is just occurring now. Ooh, don't cough, because that'll scare people. Uh, so yes, this is what you can see now. Um, you may be in the future laughing at the absurdity of the contravirus panic, or maybe humanity has fallen, I don't know. But uh, you're in the future, I'm not. I'm here in the present, so I can't tell the future. I'm not Nostradamus. Uh, I'm rambling now, so I'm going to end the video here. Hopefully you found that fun and interesting. Yep, hit the like button. If you want to see more of this, subscribe. I put new videos out pretty much every week. Yeah, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.